well hi guys welcome back again to my kitchen today I'm going to make you guys a Jamaican auto bread I'm going to make you up this auto bread I'm going to show you how I do it in my kitchen so if you want to see how I make my auto bread come on and let's roll Well, let's go through the ingredients. I have four cups of all-purpose flour. We're going to use a teaspoon of salt. We're going to use two teaspoons of dried yeast. I'm also going to add to that one cup of granulated sugar. I'm going to add four ounces of hard butter and two teaspoons of regular vegetable shortening and a half a cup of water and one cup of milk so come on and let's put all this together okay guys this is the first step that you're going to do you're going to get your milk and your water and you just pour your this is one cup of milk and this is half cup of water so you just pour everything together the next thing you're going to do is go ahead and add your sugar and the two teas the two tablespoon of sugar and your salt so you just go ahead and put everything in I'm going to start mixing that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add my yeast to this. And I'm going to add a, a, one tablespoon and a half of yeast. So that's one and a half. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. Just let it sit room temperature. I'm going to put it into the microwave and get, make it get warm. And I want it to get hot. It's supposed to look like this. You guys can see that, right? But once it gets warm up and the E set, it's going to have a little bubbly, bubbly thing going on. Alright? So I'm just going to put this away for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I'm going to pop it in the microwave. And I'm going to go ahead and let it get warmed up for the next step. So, okay guys, you have your four cups of all-purpose flour here and I'm going to go ahead and add two teaspoons of butter and two teaspoons of vegetable shortening in here so we'll just put that in make sure that your hands are clean no dirty finger nail and thing there because you're going to be using your hands for this so you just go ahead and just kind of play around with the butter and the vegetable shortening break it up into the dough this is going to make your bread not just nice and moist in the inside but it's going to be nice and crispy on the outside okay guys now my yeast is ready it's been sitting there for about 10 to 15 minutes and how you know it's ready when you can practically scoop up the yeast in the spoon and it looked like this that's when you know it's ready all right so now let's go to the next step you had a little bit at a time And with dough, when you're making bread, you don't want it to be tough. Your dough look tough and all them things. You want the dough soft. Because you want to get the, the yeast space to rise so your bread can come out nice, soft, and tasty and delicious, right? So make sure that it's nice and soft, the dough. If it looks like this, it's still not ready. It's not supposed to be like this. It has to be softer. Okay. So when I'm making my bread, guys, this is what I want it to look like. Soft, just like so. I don't want it any harder than this. It has to be this soft, just like so. Wait, actually, actually it does fall off your fingers. Let me bring it closer so you guys can see the texture of this. See? It's supposed to look just like so. So I have my surface floored up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the dough out right on top of that floor. 
dough is nice and soft okay so this is what it looks like the first step of kneading the, the dough it's supposed to look like so you can actually stretch it so soft that is this is exactly how I want it I don't want my dough to be it's hard you know my fingers are supposed to eat if you can go through it easy just bring it towards you and just push out bring it towards you push out I have my base in here right put your oil or butter I'm going to use oil in mine because all it's doing for you right here is making sure that the dough stays nice and moist and it don't get nice and crisp just get your dough up and you put it in here give it a little bit of rub on the side I'm going to get my plastic wrap and I'm just going to place it on top like so and give it a little bit of room to rise so it doesn't stick and then I get my towel and I place it over the top I'm just gonna let that sit for about an hour 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 and a half and then I come back my dough should be ready nice rise and ready for the next step so see you back in an hour and a half my flour has been resting for an hour and a half so yeah that came out nice beautifully it really really come out good so just take a plastic off see it didn't stick because I put my my butter on top of your oil it doesn't matter so that is what the dough looks like after it has been resting for exactly one and a half hours see so let me come in a little closer for you guys so y'all can see the next step I'm about to do you just want to go ahead and punch it in just like so and then turn the dough out so you can see how smooth that dough is really really smooth that is exactly how you want it to be and sprinkle some more flour on here and then we just want to go ahead and just knead this flour in just add a little bit of flour at a time do not over flour the steam because if you over flour it the, the bread will come out very very dry and you don't want the bread come out dry so use your fingers and play around with this thing so knead about for 10 minutes this don't need no more flour it's just right perfect see it's not sticking to my hands and it's not sticking to the counter either as you can see right here I have my baking pan and I have my parchment paper on the inside you just put your butter on your cooking aisle and make sure you grease the side so it doesn't stick so the next thing I'm going to do here guys may I go ahead and put my dough in here put my dough in here I'm gonna let this dough sit for another I'll say another 15 minutes all right and I'm just gonna let it sit and rise again and after 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes you just go ahead and you put it in your oven but make sure you do the same method you did before you put your plastic wrap back on the top like so and then you cover it again just like that and you just leave it so 10 to 15 minutes I make it rise again and then you put it in the oven it's going to be baking for I'd say 25 to 30 minutes and then on 355 make sure it's your oven preheat before you put your bread in the oven at 350 so we will see about all right so okay guys it has been 15 minutes exactly 15 minutes since this dough has been rising and it's rise perfectly and it's ready to go into the oven so I'm just going to take the plastic off and that it what is what it looks like right now so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven at 350 and it's going to be baking for 25 to 30 minutes so let's say about a half an hour now so I will see you back when this thing is all done alrighty so that what it looks like guys all right see you back okay guys the bread is all done took it out of the oven let it cool for like 10 minutes and now I'm about to take it out to let you guys see what it looks like so there it is all done so let's give it a little slice here mmm this is so there you have it guys I'm all done Jamaican auto bread 
in my kitchen don't forget to like and subscribe let me know what you want me to cook next for you guys all right give this video a thumbs up go ahead and like that instagram page as well as my fan page and don't remember as always from my kitchen to your kitchen enjoy on medium heat, cover it up nice and make it simmer. And when it's done simmer, I tie it to eat. So see you back okay, in a few minutes. minutes. This is the end of your foundation for coverage. You know, like bam. And last but not least, the last thing I tend to go for in my makeup collection is this palette right here. Let me show you what this baby looks like. It has a whole bunch of concealers. I believe it's $10 for this.